Okay. So next question: um, How many should we choose? Uh, when you do uh, when you do uh, eigen decomposition, you are going to end up with as many eigenvectors as you had original dimensions. So if you had d coordinates, you're going to end up with d eigenvectors. And uh, we want to reduce the dimensionality, so we want to pick m, which is smaller than d, hopefully a lot smaller. Um, so we showed that the eigenvalue is the amount of variance. So we're going to pick the biggest ones, but where are we going to stop? How do we decide where, how many to pick? <clears throat> so, um, and uh, the, the, the solution is, well, one solution is kind of natural. So you say that uh, each dimension, right, each eigenvector, the eigenvalue tells you what, how much variance is this dimension capturing. So we cannot capture all of the variance in the data, right? unless um, uh, usually. Uh, but we can say maybe we want to capture almost all the variance. right? So maybe we want to capture 90% of the variance in the data, or 95%. So uh, we could do that just by looking at the eigenvalues. right? So if we add up the first m eigenvalues, and then divide by the sum of all eigenvalues, all d of them, that will tell us what proportion of the variance we're capturing by taking the first m dimensions, right? And what we're hoping here is uh, we're hoping that if you if, if if you plot the cumulative sum of the eigenvalues, uh, it's going to have a shape that goes kind of like that. So the first few dimensions, you're really going to um, capture a lot of the uh, a large proportion of the variance, and then. Uh, to get to 100%, you're going to have to pick many, many, many more dimensions, right? But you should be able to get to 90% with relatively few dimensions. So you're, you're hoping that this thing is kind of curved up like that, right? <clears throat> Uh, so uh, that's the way you usually pick. You pick a threshold value, 90%, 95%, and you look for uh, m such that the sum of the eigen of the first of the m largest eigenvalues is 90% of the uh, total uh, total sum, which is the total amount of variance uh, in the system. So that's one way uh, to do it. Um, uh, another way that I've seen in some places is uh, you don't look at the cumulative, you look at the scree plot. So the scree plot, again, um, here I'm plotting the sum of the eigenvalues as a function of uh, their, their count. Right? Uh, I could also just sort them and plot the eigenvalues in decreasing order. And here you get a plot that's kind of similar to what we had with k-means. With k-means we had the variance, and it was going down as a function of the number of clusters. And now you have uh, eigenvalues, which are basically the variance, and they also go down as a function of the number of dimensions that you pick. So you can pick out the, you know, you can you can pick out the stopping point in the same way that we talked uh, about for for k-means. So you know, look at it visually. Where does the mount and and, and the rubble begin? Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but this is a bit more principled. Okay, um, so let's, uh, let's recap. Uh, PCA, we start with a high dimensional data, um, and the data, uh, the attributes in that data are correlated, right? So we have our uh, heights and our refus, uh, right? And they turn out to be the same thing. Um, and we want to, uh, we want to, um, reduce the dimensionality of the data. So the way we do that is we look for a dimension of the biggest variance. The reason for that is we're trying to minimize cases like that, where two points, red points, that are very far away end up very close together in the projected uh, dimension. <clears throat> uh, so how do we do it? We center the points, compute the covariance matrix, which tells us how the attributes are related between each other, find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the covariance matrix, <clears throat> And by the way, if you're doing it in a godly language like MATLAB, it's just, just like that. Um, so uh, we end up with d eigenvectors. We don't want all of them. We pick m, smallest ones, based on the percentage of the variance that you want to capture. Right? And uh, the next step is you project the each data instance by doing a dot product between the data instance and one of the dimensions <coughs> that you picked. So you do that, and you end up with low-dimensional data, uh, and it is also uh, decorrelated. 